All right. The plan for today is going to be an old school flight from Cold Bay, Alaska to Dutch Harbor, Alaska using only the NDBs. Cold Bay, Alaska has an NDB departure. Dutch Harbor, Alaska has an NDB approach. We're going to try it in the A2A Piper Comanche. As you can see, it's a very, very cold day out. I can't even keep the airplane warm with the, uh, the window open. So let's get this plane started up so we can defog the windows. And, uh, and then we'll uh, talk about brief the approach and get going. All right, let's go battery on. Pump, or let's check the tanks. I've already filled them up all the way, leaving the tip tanks empty. Whoop, fuel on and pump on primer. It's very cold out. We're going to give it five good strokes. All right, lock the primer. Let's get our strobe, or sorry, our beacon on. And nav light, mags, brakes, mixture, power, and start. Let's see if we can get this plane started. There we go, comes to life. All right, check the oil pressure. Oil pressure's coming up. We can lean the mixture now. Let's close the window, start heating up the cockpit. So we'll go cockpit heat on, defrost on, turn off the pump, turn on the navs, they're already on, sorry, and avionics on. Autopilot on. Automated weather, we've got it right here. Let's get it one more time. Altimeter is 2972. Altimeter is 2972. Let's roll it down. I guess up, up to 2972. All right. And we have the GPS on, but we're not going to use it set the CDI to VLOC mode, which it is. Uh, let's turn on, we're going to need our COM2 because it's a DME required approach. Let's turn on the ADF. The RMI is here. We're going to be using that for system most test of the okay. And now that the windshield is fully defrosted, we can put the defroster back a bit. Okay. Let's uh, start our taxi. Over the winds, the winds were one six at four. Let me head on over to the charts, which I've got up on the stream. And looking at three three is the best runway to use. Uh, I'm just going to display my position here. It looks like a left turn. We'll back taxi on one five. We'll taxi on eight and then one five for a bit to get to three three. All right, let's get this party started. cold snowy day out today so what the plan is going to be in order to prevent cheating first of all I've got the charts printed out so I'll be using the printed charts um, the position will be shown on the geo reference digital charts but I won't be referencing that just so I don't cheat um, furthermore furthermore uh, I've got uh, I'll be uh, sure that I don't get on the runway when he's coming. Anyway, furthermore, I'll be turning off outside visuals. I know it's very beautiful and snowy, but uh, when I do this kind of IFR stuff, I like to um, I like to turn off uh, the outside visuals, just look at the cockpit only. So it'll be a pretty boring stream uh, if that's not the kind of thing you're into. Hello, Jambo, and welcome. And I did see that Half Moon Bay came out. 
It looks beautiful, um, but I tend not to buy the small airports just because I almost never go to them. All right, let's get the strobes on. Clear left, clear right. Actually, I should probably wait here for this guy to land. Where the hell is he? Meh, or I can make him go around. I don't really care. It's just AI. Alright, I'll do my run-up when I get to the, um, the hold short or when I get to the runway numbers. I'll do the run-up there, we'll brief the approach there. And I'll talk through how I'm gonna fly this using the ADF. Oh, there's the guy, fine. I'll wait for him, because he's right there. In real life, of course, he would never stop on a runway like this. That's just bad news. So he's a beach king air. They tend to be important, or at least act like they're important. I also just picked up the new Delian clip um, after Ecstasy talked about it. It works pretty good, but I had to finagle it a bit and use permanent marker in order to get it not to reflect. Alright, let's turn to face into the wind now. Straighten up. And, alright, oil temperature is good, we can start the run up. First, let's check the controls up left, up right, in the back, rudder, great. We'll go mixture rich, full power, well, 1800 RPM. Start with the mag check, left, all right, that needs to be cleaned up. We'll go 2200 RPM. Clean the best power, leave it there for a bit. And uh, while we're doing that, we can cycle the prop a couple times. So we'll go down, check MP and RPM. MP rises, RPM drops. Now we'll check oil pressure. Oil pressure drops. No oil on the cowl. Not that there ever would be. Alright, let's take it back down to 8. Or actually, we'll do one more check. Let's do the car beat check as long as we're here. Car beat out. RPM drops. Okay, let's go back down to 1800 RPM. Mixture rich. Try the left mag again. Yeah, it's still pretty dirty. Try the right mag. Right mag's fine. Alright, I'll clean it up a bit more while we talk through the approach. Okay, let's go to the chart. All right, this is the Chuna 1 departure. Um, and as you can see here, it starts, uh, well, let's, let's look at the textual description. All right, we're taking off runway 33. It's a climbing left turn to heading 263. So let's set the heading bug to 263. There we go. Um, and then from there, intercept the 239 bearing from ELF NDB to Chuna. So we intercept the 239 bearing. So what we're going to do, um, and that's probably enough cleaning, let's move this back to idle. So what we're going to do, um, since this is a non-automatic RMI, we're going to set the RMI to 263 as well, because that's going to be our expected heading. And so that way the radials will line up. So there's 260, 123, great. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to fly heading 263, 
until the tail portion of the needle shows 239 because you know we're heading outbound on the 239 radial to Shuna. Um, and we're going to need to identify Morty um, off of the CDB VOR. So, do they even print the cold base CDB 122.6? Let's get that dialed in. 112.6, my bad. 112.6, we'll flip it. And we will, we got our distance 4.7 miles. Okay, we know we reached Morty when we get 82 miles out. Um, as for the ADF, Elfie is 341. Um, so let's dial that in. Gotta go all the way down. Two, three. I have the worst mouse wheel in the whole world. It's pretty awful. Oh, is Icarus? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I have the, um, the Delian clip for track hour. I like it, but it, uh, I really have to do it this way. But no, three, four. Okay, great. Um, so that's the, uh, and let's also set up the other one. So I'm going to go to the other chart now for Dutch Harbor. Um, and that is showing 283. So 283 is going to be the number for that one. So let's flip this. Let's go down to 283. And ideally we should get something. I don't know. Let's identify nav one for CDB. Just, uh, Oops, that's nav two actually. Should hear it. Maybe not. Um, but we'll leave that open. We'll hear it eventually. And for three, four, one, let's also monitor the ADF. The way I was taught is if you are doing an NDB based approach, you gotta you gotta have the ADF. Thanks, Jambo. See ya. You got to have the ADF or the NDB monitored the whole time. All right. Let's see. Three, four, one. Well, maybe we'll get it when we're in the air. I hope we do. Um, otherwise, this whole thing's a wash. It's on and. Yep, it's definitely on. antenna we want ADF I don't know well I hope we get it when we're in the air I truly do otherwise we got a problem let's that's not gonna make a difference right no that's not gonna make a difference um, certainly nothing to do with the GPS oh we should have the pedo heat on by the way it's super cold out um, what is the outside air temperature oh, just below freezing anyway obviously icing would be a concern um, but uh, this is prepared, so that's not really a problem. Oh well, if we don't get it, I'll pause, I'll figure it out. Okay, everything else is good to go for takeoff. We've got, um, let's uh, run through our pre-takeoff checks, mixture, full rich altimeter, lights, landing and strobe. No, lights are not happening, I guess, oh well. Lights trim transponder. Oh, trim. Got to make that neutral. Transponder is automatic. So we have lights trim transponder doors and windows. All right, let's get out of here. Parking brake off. Let's take the runway. And we're going to climb to 100 feet above, or 400 feet above field elevation. That's 500 feet before we start our on course turn. All right, let's go full power. Check the RPMs, they look good. Engine gauges, they're all in the green. Airspeed's alive. 80 knots, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. There we go, now we got the ADF. And we're gonna continue monitoring.
actually, let me pause, zoom out. Sorry to get rid of the beautiful view, but I want to do this right. And we're going to actually move the display a bit. There we go. And let's make sure that y'all can see the ADF. Yes, you can. Okay, good. Let's continue our climb. Oh, I didn't mention a cruising altitude. It's going to be 8,000 is the, uh, the MIA for the route of flight for westbound flight. So it's going to be 8,000. Uh, let's go to 25, 25. Let's go to 25 and max manifold pressure. There we go. the ADF works, it's only accurate if the heading you have, or the, the bearings are only accurate if the heading you have dialed in is the heading you're flying. So we're showing 263 and 263, and we're looking for the tail of the needle to be on 239. There's 7,000, that's 1,000 to go. We're getting close to 239. 
start that turn pretty soon. Also get an in route altimeter. I'm going to just grab that from Active Sky. It's 2972 still, so we'll leave that alone. Almost ready to intercept 239. We'll start the turn when we do. It's a very short turn, only 30 degrees or so, so uh, 20 degrees. So, um, do it. We're not going to lead the turn by very much. But we'll just work on uh, just keeping our flying nice and smooth. Working on my scan, making sure that I've got the attitude indicator as my primary reference for all my heading and attitude, uh, heading and altitude changes. Uh, cross set cross check the instruments before takeoff. That was my bad. I should have, of course, set the heading indicator prior to takeoff and cross checked all the other instruments. Fortunately, it's prepared. Things don't really fail, so to speak. Oh, and of course, I need to set mixture to 75% power right here at 15 GPH. It's all nicely labeled on the fuel flow indicator. No need to fiddle. Okay, there's more than 239, let's turn, tie, tune, and twist the heading bug to 239. Twist the ADF to 239 as well. I shot it while I was focused on the ADF, and it's been flying. And then throttle, we don't touch, talk, we don't need to talk, think, what's our next step? All right. So for now, what we're going to basically do is just keep the needle pointed exactly 180 degrees. This is where we're going to find out if we have any wind drift. Because um, if we do, the needle's going to drift either to the left or the right, and we can correct our heading uh, correspondingly. Um, but for now, it's showing dead on 180 degrees. That's what we want to see. Now, in terms of our next steps, uh, I'm going to move to the uh, to the end route view now. Um, Out. But in terms of our next steps, we're looking for eighty-two DME to indicate that we're at forty, and we will cross-check that by also checking the cross radial off of um, Dutch Harbor NDB, which you can see. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this in flight at the same time without autopilot is. A matter of practice. Okay, well, anyway, 
as I was saying, um, we're going to look for the cross radial um, on the Dutch Harbor NDB, which, as you can see, is 217. So uh, when we get close to that DME, we'll cross check it with the cross radial off of Dutch Harbor. That'll just verify that we're on course and everything is A-OK. -okay. But for now, we're just going to be worrying about that needle, making sure it's pointing exactly 180 degrees because we are leaving the NDME behind us, like outbound on the 239 radial. And of course, the ability of the needle to point exactly 180 degrees backward is entirely dependent on my ability to accurately fly the heading, matching what I've got dialed into the ADF indicator. So as long as I'm flying that heading well, the needle's going to accurately indicate the correct outbound radial. Or in, sorry, the needle will indicate the correct inbound radial. The, head, the tail of the needle at the top of the screen, 360, will indicate the outbound radial that I'm supposed to be flying. Anyway, winds don't look too strong. At least the needle hasn't uh, drifted all that much. That's good. Honestly, no idea what the weather is like outside. We could be in deep icy conditions here, well below freezing. But I'm assuming that if we're prepared, it doesn't matter all that much. One thing that does matter, however, is carb heat. Uh, and I do think the manifold pressure is dropping off bit by bit. I may turn on carb heat if that's the case. Like I keep having to retrain upwards, which is a big clue that my power is slowly dropping off. I think that's kind of the oversimplified way in which it simulates carb heat. So I'll keep an eye on the manifold pressure. If it does continue to drop off, I'll just bring in the car heat and that should restore things. to talk about at this point. Um, I'm just going to keep my eye on the instruments. It's nicely tripped out now, finally. Just do periodic heading cross checks. we got 239 showing here. And gyro drift. 239 now showing here. Um, looks like we are being pushed just a little bit to the left. You can see that because the tail of the needle is moved to the right, which means the NDP is to the right. So we're being pushed just a little bit to the left. I'm going to fix that. But instead of flying 239, I'm going to fly 244. Just adjust my heading a little bit to the right. Again, like I said before, I have the worst mouse wheel in the world. Mouse wheel. I'll fly a 10 degree heading for a bit just to get us back on track, and then I'll set up a 5 degree heading. Now remember, since I'm flying 10 degrees off of what's indicated in the ADF, I should expect the needle to also indicate 10 degrees off, which indeed it does. And so that's how I know I'm flying correct. You could also just reset the ADF to your new heading, but um, uh, it seems like a lot of work. Maybe it's a good idea. I don't know. I've talked to someone who does this a lot. Scanning the um, DME occasionally too. For 7 miles for Morty. We're looking for 82 miles. Alright, let's go now and see how we're doing. Let's go to. That was a lot of right offset, so hopefully that'll put us in the right place. We'll sort of eat up the wind inaccuracies that happened. Now, we'll go to our 5 degree offset. That needle should indicate exactly five degrees to the right. So let's get, there we go, get an accurate heading going. And it does, exactly five degrees to the right. That shows us that we have now properly eaten up the offset that the wind pushed us towards. And now, if it stays five degrees to the right, we know that um, this five degree offset is gonna work for the wind correction. So a lot harder than with uh, VOR, obviously a lot, lot harder than with the GPS, but you can still do wind corrections with the MDB and ADF. It's gonna maintain that heading nice and well. 
It's been a little while. Let's do another altimeter check. 2973 now. So let's bring it up one. Obviously, in real life, ATC would be handing you the altimeter settings, but uh, I'm kind of 100% focused on working on my instrument flying uh, scan skills and my ADS skills for no good reason. So I'm uh, not too worried about ATC at the moment. That might be a bit much. Needle's showing kind of a two or three degrees now, so uh, I'm going to temporarily go back to 239. Um, again, I'm worst mouse wheel in the world. I'm going to temporarily go back to 239 here, and uh, yeah, as you can see now, the needle's pointing to our left, so the, 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 the NDB is to our left, and therefore the course that we want to fly is to our left. A little bit far in the right. It could be a wind change. It could be just uh, just tech, you know inaccuracies in technique. So I'm just going to stay here at 239. Let the needle kind of fix itself, and then we'll do another course correction for the wind as necessary. But for now, we're just going to fly our actual outbound course at 239. Um, I will brief the approach uh, before we do it for Dutch Harbor. I'll do that once we get on the second leg of our in route course. So once, uh, as you can see on the map, once we cross Morty and then come inbound on the 217 bearing to Dutch Harbor NDB, uh, that's when I'll start prepping for and briefing the approach. We'll get the descent going as well. So, to review, um, we've completed the Chuna 1 departure from Cold Bay, and we are on the uh, Green 8 route, NDB, uh, NDB route, heading towards Morty intersection. That's part of the transition for the Chuna 1 departure. Once we reach Morty intersection, uh, we are going to do um, an approach to the Dutch Harbor. We're going to be doing the um, uh, 
the NDB A in the Dutch Harbor, which is going to start uh, at the Dutch Harbor NDB, and I'll talk about that later in a bit. For now, we're just continuing the transition portion uh, at 8,000 of the Chuna 1 departure. The bearing that we're supposed to be flying, uh, the outbound bearing we're supposed to be flying is 239. I've got that dialed into the heading indicator, and I've also got it dialed into the ADF. You can see now on the ADF that when we have the correct bearing, and let me just actually cross-check it, make sure the compass hasn't drifted too much here. So let's level the wings and get back on to the heading. And we're showing a magnetic heading of 240, and uh, just one degree off. So as you can see here, um, we get it. Needle's just a little bit to the right of the 180 degree position. Oh, never mind. I drifted. It's hard to do accurately. It's much more easy with a, um, a CDI as you can use for a EMR. Okay, anyway. Yeah, actually, it looks like the needle's bang on. So it looks like maybe uh, we're a little bit to the right, it looks like maybe, of our desired course. You can see the needle's pointing just a bit to the left, which means um, that the NDB is just a bit to the left and the course that we want is just a bit to the left. So possible we're drifting just a bit to the right of our course. Uh, I'm just going to monitor it for now. I'll set up a correction later um, if it gets to be a little more than that. Although actually, come to think of it, the further away we get, um, the more these small deviations matter. So let's start the correction now. So I'm going to set the heading selector five, de uh, five degrees to the left. So that'll be 236. And then I'm going to set a 10 degree to the left offset for now. Uh, so that'll be uh, 229. So let's fly 229 for about 20 or 30 seconds. And now, again to review, since we're flying 10 degrees off of the heading that we put into our ADF, we would expect the needle to be pointing 10 degrees to the left of the 180 degree position, and that's how we'll know when we're back on course. As you can see right now, well, let me get that dialed in just a little bit better. There we go. As you can see right now, it's pointing about 11 degrees. So we have to eat up about one more degree, um, and then we'll establish a five degree left offset. And that'll hopefully account for whatever these are, changing winds, possibly just inaccuracies. Scanning the uh, DME, we're about 50 miles out. Again, we're looking for 82 miles. When we get close to that, we'll start uh, monitoring the other uh, NDB. Okay, it's showing about 10 degrees now, pretty bang on, so let's turn to the right here. Set up our five degree left offset. Now, again, since we're flying five degree difference from the course that we've dialed into the ADF, we would expect the needle to be pointing at the five degree hatch mark to the left of the 180 degree position. Um, and it looks like it's pointing just a bit to the right of that. Uh, let me cross check our heading once more, 236 and 236, that's correct. So. It looks like we're uh, drifting a bit to the right. Um, let me set the heading correctly. Let me just set where you see where we need to go. Okay, we should probably go back on course now at this point. So I'm going to set the heading selector back to 239. We'll maintain that heading. It was so easy on the altitude. It's just tripped perfectly. We're just doing really gentle touches on the uh, to maintain this. Okay. Alright, so the MDBs and the desired core is still a little bit to our left, but I think with that, um, uh, I think that will maybe drift back to where we want it to be. If it doesn't, we'll just correct. But for now, uh, everything seems to be pretty close to being right where we want it to be. And again, to review, I monitor the ADF continuously. Whenever you're flying an NDB-based approach, departure, and route portion, you always monitor the NDB continuously. And that's what I was taught. So. All right, let's just do another altimeter check here. Altimeter is still 2973, so that's fine. Oh, and I did not weather brief this before. Um, two main reasons. Number one, of course, icing doesn't matter in preparedness, so not really the major threat of a flight like this is kind of pointless. And uh, number two, I mean, I was going to do the flight no matter what. So it's entirely possible that when I turn on outside view rendering later, um, 
it's entirely possible we may have to go mist, and I'll try to fly the mist approach. Um, and then who knows, maybe I'll go VFR and die for the field. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, but I don't actually know what the weather is. I haven't looked. This is real time weather as of dawn this morning in Alaska. So like, uh, what time is it? As of uh, almost 10 o'clock. So we'll get there probably probably like 10:30 or so. Uh, this morning, so whatever the weather was, 10:30 this morning at uh, on Alaska Dutch Harbor is what we'll get. Um, and so I don't, I honestly don't know if we're going to be going this or not. But if we do, I will.
starting to swing pretty wildly. It's going to be more or less impossible to maintain an accurate course, especially at this distance with that kind of inaccuracy. So we'll kind of just leave things the way they are. If there are any gross changes in our course, we can adjust, but uh, we'll do the best we can. I think this is why people don't use NDBs anymore. FAA says uh, an airway is four nautical miles wide. Um, at 60 nautical miles, one degree is one mile. So at 60 nautical miles, you have to be plus or minus four degrees in order to stay within the airway. We're at 70 nautical miles, so each degree uh, takes up even more. So, uh, But it's pretty close to 60, so plus or minus four degrees is a pretty good bet. As you can see, that needle's moving probably about plus or minus three degrees. So we're very close to being the needle being so inaccurate that uh, we essentially can't maintain our airway. Um, however, the good news is for intersections, I believe they actually widen it out just a bit for intersections. I remember seeing a picture in the instrument flying handbook, but I don't remember the details. Um, so I think our I think our protected airspace around the airway um, is actually a little bit wider, so we might be okay. Yeah, it is fluctuating quite a bit, but I can tell that we are continuing to get just maybe a little bit to the left of the course. So I'm going to turn right, put the heading indicator back on our desired course, 239. Uh, so let's do that, and then we're going to turn to 239. We would now, since we are on the same course that the ADF is uh, turned to, we would expect to see the needle exactly 180 degrees. Of course, it's going to fluctuate to the left and right as we get further away. Uh, we're a little under 10 miles to go before we start. Um, I'm just going to start doing cross checks. Uh, so for Dutch Harbor, um, uh, as you can see in the picture, our inbound course, our inbound radial is going to be 217. So we expect the head of the needle to turn to 217 when it's time to turn in. So I'm just going to set my correct heading here. I'm just going to briefly flip the ADF so we can take a look at how things are going over on the Dutch Harbor side of things. Flop it. All right. Uh, it looks like right now our radial is and it's still pretty inaccurate. Um, just about 217, actually. Uh, but we still have a little bit of a ways to go. That's probably because we're not maintaining uh, the course very accurately. So let's start the turn now. Um, yeah, we have actually just a bit to go. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait like the ADF says, or like the, um, the DME says, we will wait. Um, do our best to fly this course even though the needle's swinging really wildly now. Um, but it's good. We did cross-check it. We are coming up on the correct radial for Dutch Harbor. And we're just about ready to make that turn. I suppose one good reason to wait is DMA. DME is imminently more accurate than NDBs, so you should probably trust it. Get another altimeter check in there. Altimeter 2972. We'll roll it back to 2972. Okay, remind ourselves one more time. Inbound heading is 217. Inbound, sorry, inbound radial is 217. Don't mix that stuff up, it'll confuse people. Does that mean we're gonna be flying 217? Uh, yes, it does actually. So it is the inbound course, it's not the inbound radial. My bad. Yes, it is It is both the inbound radial and the inbound course, because we are flying inbound. All right, let's start that turn now since I'm getting, managed to confuse myself and I'm getting off course. So let's twist it over to 21567. Start that inbound turn. Let's flop over the ADF. And we don't need the DME anymore at this point. And let's just get uh, get settled here on 217. 
Now, we should also twist the ADF over to 217. I mean, all we're really looking for is that the needle's pointing due north, so it doesn't really matter. But for accuracy, um, 21567, there we go. That way, if for whatever reason, we need to look at um, a different radial, or I guess a good reason would be, you know, to prep for the approach, which we're going to do next. Okay, 217, we're pointing directly at it. That's good. We'll just keep going this way. It actually looks like, well, I'm getting a off course again. Okay, let's bring up the approach. Um, so let me get that set up for you. Okay, the approach is up. And we can brief it. We've got the printed copy right here. Uh, so that I don't see my own, so I don't cheat and I, I don't see my own airplane. I'm just going to use a printed copy. Okay, so to review the approach from top to bottom, AWOS is 125.8. We can dial that in on the COM1. So 1258 transfer. Let's see if we can hear anything. Alpha, Delta, Delta, Uniform, Automated Weather Observation. Dial in the, uh, style in the CTAF. Is there no CTAF? Uh, 122.6. Okay, that's Cold Bay Radio. Not a CTAF, it's a Unicom. But anyway. Um, okay, so, as you can... As you heard, weather's really nice in Cold Bay, actually. It's uh, clear and unlimited, essentially. So uh, I figure we will have no trouble getting in. Obviously, I'm not going to shoot the visual approach. I'm going to keep outside rendering turned off until we get to the missed approach point. Well, we'll talk about that because we're not quite going to do it that way. Anyway, let's continue from the top to the bottom. Um, OK, so it's 25.8 on the AWOS. That's, uh, we've got the AWOS since 226 on Cold Bay, that's COM1. Um, NDB is 283, that's dialed in, and we identified it. It's been beeping at us this whole time, though we didn't actually hear the letters. Um, next time it goes. Okay, that's DUT, great. Uh, final approach course is going to be 171. Um, talk about the missed approach in a bit. Let's go over the notes. Procedure not authorized at night. It's daytime. Use local altimeter setting. We got it. Strong winds may cause severe turbulence. It's not really modeled in P3D, but so noted. Um, we're not a helicopter, and we don't need PCL. Okay, notes for review. Now let's talk about the plan. So uh, we're going to come in on the 216, 217, sorry, um, radial. Then we make a right turn outbound to the 351 radial, as depicted on the chart, towards Zorni intersection. Crossing Zorni intersection, um, we are going to make a procedure turn to the left. With 306 is our outbound heading, 126 is our inbound heading, and then we're going to turn inbound on the 171 radial. Um, I followed a false horizon for two seconds. So that's some uh, instrument flying 101 is don't pay attention to false horizons. There's a bit of a glare on our black windshield that I mistakenly took as a horizon. Okay. Uh, inbound, 171 radial. Uh, missed approach point is the DME. Or sorry, the missed approach point is the NDB itself. Uh, that's right over the airport, so that's not a great missed approach point. So we're going to actually go missed at Zorni intersection because Zorni intersection is more or less the VDP or visual descent point which is the point where a normal descent will take you from the uh, final approach fixed altitude, from the final altitude to the runway. So that's that's kind of what we want. So it's Zorni intersection. How are we going to identify Zorni intersection? Uh, using DME off of Dutch Harbor VOR, which is 113.9. So let's dial that into nav uh, two. Thing. There, no. 
There we go. Okay, what was it again? It was 113.9 while maintaining our scan. Let's dial that in. Always scroll a bit, look. Scroll a bit, look. That's how you do it. Okay, 113.9. Let's go back to frequency display mode, 63 miles out. Um, okay. So for the altitudes for this, um, it looks like 4100. Uh, 4100 is the uh, outbound, or sorry, yeah, maximum of 6,000 over the NDB initially. So we'll have to descend to 6,000. Then descend outbound, we can descend to 4100. We can actually be at 4100 over the NDB uh, because it says maximum 6,000. But 4100 is the lowest we can be over the NDB for the outbound portion and the procedure turn. Upon completing the procedure turn, we can go to 2900 before Zorni, as it's shown on the profile view. Uh, 2900, um, crossing Zorni, we can go down to our MDA, minimum descent altitude, which is 2200 because we are a category A aircraft. Um, now, I, earlier I said we're going to use Zorni as our visual point, but it's clear to me that that's not actually the VDP. So what we'll do is we'll just descend from Zorni from 2900 down to 2200. Once we reach 2200, we'll just go visual. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to need the missed approach based on the weather, but to brief it anyway, it's going to be uh, climbing straight ahead to 3,000 feet on that uh, 171 final radial. Uh, and then a left turn, left climbing turn to 4,300, uh, direct back to the VOR and then hold. And looking at the hold, it's going to be a teardrop entry for the hold. We're not going to need it, but uh, it's briefed. Um, okay, so how's the uh, how's the ADF going to work with this? So basically, um, what we're going to do right now, the ADF matches our heading. So our heading is 217, which is, you know, for the green eight route, um, is a 217 inbound course towards, uh, towards Dutch Harbor. Um, the needle's pointing more or less straight up. We're actually getting blown to the right. I should have been paying attention to that. So I'm going to set up a 10 degree offset so we can get back on course. It's actually a huge amount off course considering our distance. Yeah, we're, we're well off course. So um, let's set the heading indicator to 207, 10 degree offset, 207. And let's fly that for a bit. And then again, because we're flying 10 degrees left of what's dialed into the ADF, we would expect the needle to point 10 degrees to the right. It's clearly not doing that. Um, so we're going to wait until the needle's pointing about 10 degrees to the right, then we're back on course. We'll continue with a five degree offset, five degree wind correction angle. Okay, so we'll work on that for now. Um, anyway, like I was saying, so what's gonna happen is right now the ADF is dialed into 217, which is our inbound course. Once we cross over the NDB, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the ADF uh, to 171, which is the inbound course. It will fly outbound 301. So we would expect the needle to be pointing directly 180 degrees on the tail of our own course. Then we'll fly our procedure turn, we'll fly inbound at 171, and at that point we would expect the needle to be pointing exactly straight up. Uh, and for the missed approach, again, you would expect it to be pointing straight back because you will have crossed over the NDB. So that's how it's going to work for the final approach portion. We're still 60 miles out, so I'm not going to be getting the descent quite yet. monitoring the NTV, part of that is listening to the Morse code. It could change to anything else if it were to suddenly go under maintenance, maybe like the letters test, or it could um, just change to uh, just like a ZZZ or something like that. They could change it to anything um, during a, a test or a maintenance period, of course, in which case you have to go miss to pick a different approach. Okay, we're getting close to 10 degrees on the needle, which means we're getting close to on course. Uh, I'm going to set a 5 degree offset, so 217 minus 5 is 212, so let's dial the heading indicator up to 212. Oops, too far, okay. And now we'll fly this, and we expect the needle to be about 5 degrees off, which it is. And hopefully this is a good wind correction angle. We'll know over time if the needle drifts. Uh, we're still pretty far out, so this drift will take a while to manifest, but we'll know over time as the needle drifts, if this one correction angle is working for us.
Anyway, we got the approach briefed, uh, so we can do our five A's, five A's before an approach. The first A is ATIS, we have it, we've got the ATIS for the uh, destination airport, it's 2972. We can also cross, we can check our current ATIS, 2972 as well. Um, I don't know how that went down to 2972, let's fix it. Um, altimeter is the second day, it's set. Uh, approach brief is the third day. We did it. We talked through the entire approach, read everything on the page. Um, avionics is the fourth. Uh, we've got the avionics set on the ADF. We have Dutch Harbor and on NAV2 and dem displaying on the DME. We have the Dutch Harbor and the AR. Okay. And lastly, airplane. That's the descent checklist. We're not going to do that yet. We'll start our descent in a bit. Okay. Let's do a heading cross check now too. So let me level the wings. Nice and level. 207 degrees. Way off 207. Okay. Alright, and let's set this back to, as long as we're futzing around with headings, let's set this back to 217. Let's see how we're doing. The needle should be exactly. Uh, we might have just had a bunch of heading drift making us inaccurate. Yeah. Uh, we are pretty far off. Okay, so let's set a nice fat offset. Uh, yeah, we can almost bust our altitude there. Let's get back up. All right, let's set a nice fat offset. Needle's about 15 degrees to the right, so we would expect the ADF needle to point about 15 degrees to the right when we're back on course. Uh, we definitely have a ways to go there. Okay, it's getting closer now. Let's turn back in and see how our heading's doing, or how our, uh, how our deviation is doing. All right, zero it out. Okay, we're just a little bit to the right now. So let's uh, hold. Let's, uh, make, let's make a double offset. So whatever the needle was to the right, that much to the left. Okay. We're getting 
closer now at about 20 miles I'm going to start down we're at 8,000 now um, to review again maximum altitude over the NDB is 6,000 so we got to be lower than that but we can go down as low as 4,100 which we will no point in being high how we're doing now. Back on heading. Shoot it, which I just did. Alright, back on. Getting better. It's definitely getting better. Okay, it's just a little bit to the left, so it's five degrees to the left or so, so let's make a ten degree offset. Eventually, we at some point we can just start homing and going direct to the uh, direct to the NDB when we get closer. Homing is when you just keep the needle point at 12 o'clock. Uh, it's easy, but it's bad because the wind will blow you off course, and so you'll constantly correct that as you home. You'll end up flying this kind of like circular curly cue towards the NDB, which is not good, especially when we're on a radial and we have to maintain the radial. So, but as we get closer, it starts to matter less and less. And at some point, we can just start homing, make it really easy. tell by eyeballing it that the, uh, the green heading bug has a greater offset from the lower line than the uh, yellow ADF indicator does. So we still got to keep that uh, keep that left offset to get back on the course because we're still right of course. Pretty strong wind. Once again I'm going to cheat and see if it's the wind that's causing this. Let's just bring it up. The wind's 193 and 9. It is a crosswind from a slight crosswind from the left. So, must be something else going on here. It could just be ADF weirdness. Alright, let's get another altimeter check in there. 2971. Let's dial it in. Use, uh, not even use the DME. We could use 
use timing and our airspeed to figure out when to start the descent. Also, one thing that I haven't talked, haven't been talking about, is this Piper Comanche is a high-performance aircraft, 250 horsepower engine, which makes it high-performance. Uh, which means part of this is scanning the engine gauges. So, uh, been scanning the cylinder head temperature gauge, EGT gauge, uh, oil pressure, and oil temperature, just making sure that the engine is chewing itself apart, which it isn't. that NDB, we're going to make a right turn to heading 351. That's going to be step one. And then we're going to tune the, uh, we're going to twist the ADF to 171. So that's going to be the first step as part of the approach. Oh, and since this is an NDB alpha approach, it's not an approach to a runway. That's what alpha means. Let's just reach the mixture just a tad here. It's not an approach to a runway. It's an approach to an airport. Uh, because of the orientation of mountains and the runways, we can't really have an approach to them. Yeah, that's why this is an NDB alpha approach. Because of that, we're not going to drop gear and flaps. Uh, it's going to be a circling approach. It all has to be circling approaches. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll... Uh, what was the... What the winds? Winds calm? I don't remember. Um, let's dial in that. take either. Um, so we'll just circle and uh, I guess we'll take the, uh, the northbound runway. I just didn't have the... They don't 
say what the numbers of the movies are. I thought they did on this chart somewhere. But, uh, whatever. Anyway, we'll take the northern, the northwestern runway, I guess, uh, since the winds are calm. Uh, we have 12.6 miles to go. We're at 7,000, descending to 4,100. So let's bring, oh, yeah, manifold pressure's been creeping up. Let's bring it out a little bit more. Let's keep this descent going here. Make sure we're below 6,000 before we get to the MDB. start homing once we get closer, maybe within about five miles or so. Ten miles to go, got to be below 6,000, we're almost there. 4,100 is our minimum altitude as we complete the outbound portion of the procedure turn. And to remind you, I'm using paper charts, I'm not looking at the, um, I'm not looking at what you guys are seeing, you guys are seeing my position on the, uh, on the chart. I'm using paper charts so that I don't cheat. I do this entirely with the DVDs. Almost there. starting to swing about, we can start homing um, without worrying too much about being off airways. speed engines such as these, manifold pressure will vary with altitude for a naturally aspirated constant speed engine. So as you climb or descend, you have to constantly adjust your manifold pressure. Decrease it as you descend, increase it. Well, adjust your throttle position to maintain manifold pressure, I should say. So as we descend, I have to decrease my throttle position to maintain manifold pressure. Okay, still homing. Almost at the NDB. Coming up on 5,000 feet now, we'll go mixture rich for 1,000 to go until 4,100. All right, mixture's full rich. And since we've been in prolonged descent, I'm also going to bring out the carb heat. Carbureted engine, just to make sure we don't get carb icing, especially in this cold weather. Got to turn left now to make sure that we properly home. And to review one more time, 351 is our outbound heading right turn, 351. We can start that right turn now, we're getting pretty close, so let's turn, time, we don't need a tune, twist, we don't need tuning, to twist to 351 while continuing our descent. And then we'll twist the ADF to 351. swinging, managing our 
rate of descent, still looking for that 4100 foot target. All goes well, we should end up with the needle pointing right at the uh, right at the six o'clock position. Right as we, oh, looks like we need to, uh, looks like we, uh, we blew past our course just a bit, that's okay. Now, once we cross sortie at 2.0, we can start our procedure turn. But let me just get established a bit more first. So, we're split to the left, of course, so let's turn right. Whoa, 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 whoa. don't bust the altitude. Don't bust the altitude. back on the course, should have fixed it, we have way busted our altitude, let's fix that, alright, our altitude's fixed, our course is more or less correct at this point, we can start a procedure turn, 306 is going to be outbound, let's turn to 306 and twist, and we're going to do one minute on the timer at heading 306, and that'll be the outbound portion of the procedure turn. We're also on the inbound portion, we need to start slowing down. All right, one minute on the timer. So just looking at the second hand, it's 25 seconds. When it rolls around to 25 seconds again, we will start uh, with, the, with the inbound portion of the procedure turn. 100 feet above 4100, let's descend a bit. And let's start bringing the power back slowing down a bit. Just a tad though, not a lot. Changing speeds during a procedure turn reversal, or uh, during a course reversal like this, of course, kind of messes up the timing of the procedure turn, but whatever. Okay, that's 15 seconds, 10 seconds to go. Oh, and I was supposed to put, whoops. I was supposed to put 171 on the head. Let me do that now. I screwed that up. I screwed that all up. 171. There we go. Okay, that's 25, more than 25. Let's start a right turn the inbound portion of the course reversal. Set the heading bug to 126. Watch the altitude. Don't bust our altitudes. Get back up there. Oh, jeez. A little bit of an unusual attitude there while focusing on the heading bug. Clearly need plenty more practice. Okay, maintaining that standard rate turn on the turn coordinator. Maintaining altitude. All right, there's one, two, six. Now we'll hold it. And, ah, uh, there's something I screwed up. So that's a 45 degree course reversal. So we're looking for the needle to be at the 45 degree marker. You can see here the ADF needle is about 30 degrees. So we're gonna hold this until it's 45 degrees, and then we're gonna turn the 45 degrees to 171. I could have briefed that, I should have briefed that. That's the sort of thing that I'm not used to because I don't do NDB approaches, but it's important to note your offsets. So it's a 45 degree intercept, as you can see on the chart. So we need the needle to be pointing at the 45 degree line right here that I'm, I'm pointing out with the mouse. And let's start slowing it down a lot here. We're gonna to go to 1500 RPM. Once we're below 140, we're gonna bring the gear out. Let's really start getting the airplane under control here. And for the inbound portion, we can go down to 2900. There's 140, let's go gear down. Bring the power back in and we'll just maintain the flaps up speed so that we can bring in the flaps when we're ready. There's 45 degrees, let's turn now to 171, set the heading bug and start the turn. There we go. And we can go now down to 2900. Oops, don't 
increase the power too much. And then after crossing Zorni, which is 2.0 DME, we can go down to 2100. Okay, maintaining our heading, making sure that we don't get off course by looking at the uh, ADF. Coming up on 2900, we'll level it out until we cross 2.0 DME. Okay, everything's looking good so far. Start leveling it out. We're within 100 feet. There we go. Level it out. Bring the power back in. Okay, we're at 4 DME. We're looking for 2 DME to go down to the MDA. Starting to get to the right, of course. Let's overcorrect a bit. 120 is a great speed to maintain for this segment. Three DME. Everything's still looking great. NDB's dialed in perfectly. tenths of a mile to go. Okay, there's two. Let's go down to 2100 now. And once we get to 2100, I'll pause and we'll uh, start the visual portion. So bringing that power back, starting a nice, easy descent. I want it to be kind of fast because we're getting pretty close and I don't want to have to do anything aerobatic to get down onto the runway. So I'm allowing it to be like a 1,400 foot per minute descent. But uh, we're still tracking the NDB just a little bit to the right, of course. I'm going to correct a bit. There we go. Almost there. Almost. And pause. Okay, there's 2,100 feet. Let's go back to virtual cockpit mode. Let's enable the track IR. And we should have the runway directly ahead of us. Uh, it looks like the rendering engine's taking some time to catch up. I'm going to leave it paused while it thinks here for just a bit. Eventually, all the terrain will come in and we'll be able to see our landing spot. That was surprisingly close to mountains. Yawn, just waiting. All right, things are starting to look pretty good. Let's unpause, we'll start the visual portion. Let's bring in one notch of flaps. Ah, there's the airport directly behind, directly below us. All right, we'll circle, we'll head southbound, we'll circle to the south for a landing on runway 31. Let's not exceed that flap speed. And we can turn off monitoring now. Finally, you don't have to listen to the uh, to the Morse code anymore. All right, let's do our pre-landing checks. Carb heats out, cowl flaps, there aren't any. Gas, pump on, check gas, gas is good, fuel flow is good. Undercarriage is down, we got a green light. Mixture, full rich, propeller, let's go full prop. Mixture, propeller, seat belts. Well, we'll assume they're attached. Systems, uh, everything's in the green. And switches, we got landing lights on. All the lights are on. Okay, we're ready to start our landing. We'll go f uh, full flaps on final, but for now we're on a left base for 3-1. Beautiful day in Blue Bay. Maintain 100 knots on the base here. Let's start the base soon. I didn't actually look up what pattern altitude is. I'm kind of just fudging it, but it seems to be working. Uh, and it doesn't say what airport elevation is. 22 feet, I guess it says. So about 1,000 feet would be a good pattern altitude. All right, bringing it around to the base now. Watch that speed. 
and watch that altitude as well. All right, let's go full flaps. 500. 80 knots is going to be our uh, final approach speed. And we're looking for white and red on the Vazzy there. Let's bring in the trim, slow the airplane down. Full flaps. Oop, it might land long. I'm going to slip it just a bit. There we go. All right, now we're looking good on the glide slope. We're still a little fast, so I'm actually going to continue to slip it. There we go, 80 knots. Ooh, all over the place. This would be a missed approach normally. But we're good. Runway's a little snowy, so this will be a long roll. So I would appreciate it if it would touch down. There we go. All right, let's bring the flaps up immediately and come up on the brakes because we don't have a lot of runway left and we got to slow it. And it is snowy. Excellent day. All right. We'll just turn it around, come back to parking, and shut it down. And that'll be it. Okay, let's bring out the mixture for after landing checks. Transponder's automatic. We'll leave the lights on because we're on an active runway. Uh, flaps are up. And let me bring up the uh, airport chart here. Uh, we'll just park it to the left. The scenery at Cold Bay, the default scenery at Cold Bay, ooh, it just started snowing. Default scenery at Cold Bay is pretty nice because there is a, originally an FSX mission here where you fly the Sydney B approach, so I actually added some decent default scenery. And it looks like the wind just shifted. It would have been a better idea to land this direction, but we made it down. That is good. Hey, look, there's some dudes going to a helicopter there. That's kind of cute. All right, we'll put it next to the King Air. Coming off the runway, landing light off, strobes off. Ooh, don't hit the King Air. Lol, okay, whatever. Ah, the snow kind of screwed me up. Whatever, we'll call this a parking job. All right, let's go mixture out, avionics off. Autopilot off, we never used it. And switches off, mags off. Master off. Thank you very much for joining us, or joining me, I guess, on this flight. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good night, everyone.